Occasionally people ask me, hey, what gear do you use? Well, maybe not enough to constitute a video, but maybe occasionally I get sick of reviewing knives. Oh yeah, flashlights. So let's jump right into it so you can get started on making your own YouTube videos, which is of course terrible advice. Sorry if I sound a little negative, but I watched Geek City's two videos on demonetization and secret YouTube channel ratings. This one gets an F. And really started to wonder, what's the point of it all? And by it, I mean YouTube, which is my whole life. First up, my cameras, of which I have a love, sometimes not love relationship. I use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for my occasional flashlight videos and a Panasonic G7 for my knife videos. The Blackmagic camera has a better dynamic range for night stuff and the Panasonic G7 has a better screen that flips around so I can see what I'm doing and also it's viewable in the daylight. The Blackmagic has a terrible in the daylight screen which is slowly starting to die with all the time lapse videos and hundreds or thousands of hours it stays on for runtime tests and flashlight videos. What a terrible waste of a camera. Also, I broke the HDMI jack a long time ago and can't use an external monitor with it. Plus, battery life is terrible. Maybe I need new batteries. I think mine are all shot. However, it does have a great picture and I only paid about $500 for it at the time. It's a great pro-level camera, even if the audio sucks on it. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Sound, onboard sound is terrible. Use an external microphone or an external recorder. Picture quality though is unmatched in its price range, but you have to color correct all of the footage you shoot with it. All right, how about the Panasonic G7, which is a decent camera that luckily I have an extended warranty on because it's already broken once. It stopped reading memory cards, it has an okay picture and a flip around screen, very important for YouTube. I actually just found out about the, the uh, Cinema D setting, so maybe it'll get better. The G7 is my second Panasonic camera because my Panasonic GH3 by them died about two months outside of their one year warranty. Panasonic wanted more to fix it than it cost to purchase it outright at the end of its product cycle, like nearly $600. But the gist of this is, I've not had good luck with Panasonic cameras, mostly because cameras under $2,000 aren't pro-level cameras. Cameras, cameras, cameras. Jesus Christ. For slow-mo, I use my iPhone 8 Plus. I wish the picture quality was better on it, but what can you do? So you're probably wondering why I stuck with Panasonic, because that sounds real dumb. And it's because of the lens mount, which is micro four-thirds. And also I'm dumb. Both my Panasonic and Blackmagic share the same lens mount, and they use the same lenses. And I had already spent a bunch of money on Micro Four Third lenses. I have many camera lenses, but I use three the most because of their fast aperture and manual operation. I generally shoot in natural light. First, the 10.5 millimeter Voigtlander, 0.95. In Micro Four Thirds, to get a reasonable wide, you have to use something around 12 millimeters or wider. That is because of the crop factor. You can Google the crop factor for a particular lens mount, but basically a crop factor refers to the camera sensor size. That means if a camera has a crop factor, it has a sensor smaller than a traditional 35 millimeter or full frame DSLR. That's as easy as I can make that sound. So for micro four thirds, that crop factor is two. The crop factor is basically a simple conversion that lets you know how it relates to traditional 35 millimeter or full frame digital cameras. So a 10.5 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds is like using a 21 millimeter lens. I just multiply it by two. So when you're buying a lens for your digital camera, look up the crop factor, then do the math with the lens you're interested in. In my opinion, a good wide lens is somewhere around 25 millimeters or under after the crop factor conversion is entered in if your camera has one. Some don't. Some people spend money on their cameras. I'm poor. So the Voigtlander is pretty soft when the aperture is fully open at 0.95, which I do use occasionally, but I have found that setting it to around an f-stop of 1.4 or 2 keeps it sharp enough for my tastes. Probably a more accurate way to say that is the depth of field is so shallow at 0.95 that on any lens it's not going to be sharp except for the very center or the thing you're focused on. This lens cost me $1,100. Fast and wide is not cheap with a camera with a crop factor or any lens really. A fast and wide full frame camera lens is still expensive. 
All right, next up is the 25 millimeter SLR Magic 0.95 Cine lens for micro four thirds that I paid $300 for. I think it's a $500 lens. It's fully manual, but with gear teeth if you want to add a map box or a focus knob, which I don't use. Sometimes I shoot whole videos with this lens, probably my most used because it gives me a 50 millimeter equivalent. You know, the standard lens that we used to ship with uh, film cameras. It gives me a nice out of focus background and the ability for a shallow depth of field when used at around an f-stop of 1.4 or 2. Again, 0.95 is a little too soft for my tastes on this lens. Also, it's built like a tank. Next is a 50 millimeter Nikkor 1.4. This is about a hundred millimeter or equivalent on my Panasonic G7. A little bit more, I think, on my Blackmagic. This is just an old Nikon 50 millimeter still lens, and I use a dumb $10 lens adapter to convert it to my camera's micro four thirds mount. When buying longer lenses, it actually makes sense to just adapt instead of buying a new lens. I paid about 60 bucks for this. It is not cost effective to adapt much wider full frame lenses, to micro four thirds mount because those lenses cost more anyway. So you can adapt a full frame sensor lens to cameras with crop factor sensors. So I can take a 50 millimeter lens from a full frame Nikon, put it on my micro four thirds camera and then the field of view becomes a hundred millimeter because you have to double it. But I can't do it the other way around. You can't really use the lenses that are made for crop factor mounts on say a full frame camera like the 5D because of vignetting and other stuff. My only other lens gear I use is a variable neutral density filter. A neutral density filter allows you to cut the light coming into the lens without adjusting the aperture or shutter speed. When I shoot video, I shoot in 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 50th or 1 48th always. I generally like to keep my f-stop around 1.4 to 3.0 for shallower depths of field, and I basically use the ND filter and twist it when the image is too bright. Variable ND filters will allow you to turn the filter and cut the light. Otherwise, you have to stack filters. So variable ND filters make a lot of sense for video. But basically, they come in handy in bright outdoor settings when changing shutter speed and f-stops is not something you want to do because it changes the motion and the way the, the image looks. People use them in still photography too, but they really come in handy with video. My neutral density filter is a 72 millimeter Tiffin. I purchased it in a filter size for my largest lens on my Voigtlander 105 millimeter, and I use adapter rings to mount it to my 50 millimeter Nikon and my 25 millimeter SLR Magic. That way, I only buy one filter and just swap it out between lenses. My audio is captured one way. I do voiceovers primarily because there's no need for me to talk into a camera for a product review. This guy has a face made for voiceover work. Plus, I have a hard time remembering lines, meaning there'd be a jump cut every other word. I use an M-Audio USB to XLR interface and plug it into a Shure MX418 Podium microphone. The mic requires phantom power, and the M-Audio M-Track has that feature. I chose an XLR microphone mainly because I am an AV engineer by trade, and no professional-level microphones used in live events to use quarter-inch jacks or our USB microphones. This is kind of an oversimplification of it, but getting a USB to XLR interface for your computer opens you up to many good pro-level microphones. My computer. I use an older 2012 iMac because of Final Cut Pro. I've been editing on Final Cut Pro in a hobbyist and professional capacity since, I think, the fall of 2000. So that's why I use it. Adobe Premiere, which you have to pay for monthly now, or the new Final Cut Pro X are good choices. However, I had free access to unused Final Cut Pro software software I am very comfortable with, which is why I chose it. I only shoot in 1080p, I don't do 4K, because who cares about 4K on a cell phone, seriously? Or your computer or your television at home? I get why people like it, but it just doesn't make sense for my delivery system. I use Apple Color to color correct my videos. The Blackmagic camera, of course, requires it. Here's a before and after of a corrected and uncorrected shot or let's just say saturated and I adjust the luminance. I still use color when I use my Panasonic camera though, or I switch and mix and match cameras. If it's underexposed or overexposed, it really helps match my shots a little bit better. So I have editing headphones. I use Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones. They sound nice and have a very neutral sound, cost a reasonable $120, and are very comfortable. You're like, what about lighting? Well, I do use a few lights occasionally when I shoot indoors. 
However, my lenses are fast enough to shoot in existing light if I choose the right settings and find the light where it is. Anyway, I hope this helps a few of you dudes or dudettes who think YouTube is something you may want to dabble in and have trouble making good life decisions. I've spent a lot of money on camera gear over the years and YouTube offers very little in monetary return to cover those costs. And I really don't do the sponsorship things because I like my independence. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel for outdoor gear review. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you can find a bit of kindness in your little black heart. Thanks for watching.